All right, so I've shown you at the bottom here a lot of hyperlinks. Um, uh, on the slides themselves, these will be a link directly to the uh, respective pages. And I just wanted to show you different animations of how this whole thing works. So what do you have is your virtual page number. Let's see. Yeah. So what do you have here is your virtual page number. Um, first thing, that, there are two things that happen as soon as the address is issued. Uh, first of all, you decouple the chunk and the offset and that change travels directly. So now you note that there are no bounce check unlike segmentation. So if you had an offset in segmentation, you would have to bounce check that. But in this case, not because every offset is going, the offset is obviously not going to guarantee that you always fall within the uh, page boundaries, right? Because it's only a 12-bit address. Uh, then you have your virtual page number and what that does is it goes through a set of address translation which feeds into your physical frame or page number. At the same time, there's also a protection check, right? Is it in the kernel versus user mode? Is the user trying to access kernel space? Is it a read-write address? Um, if it don't have these permissions, then it's going to generate an exception, right? If not, uh, if everything is okay, then you go to get your physical frame number uh, match it up with the offset and then you issue the instruction. So the key question now is we got to move away from the entries and checking of each entry to the question of okay how do you achieve protection so where should page tables reside? So if you think about it they have a number of important tasks right so page tables to translation so they translate um, VPN to uh, physical page number. Uh, they achieve protection, right? So they are in each process has its own, ensures that processes don't clobber each other. Um, and to achieve both of these things, fundamentally, if user applications were enough to have control of the page table, then this would be bad, right? Because, you know, if, if the user application just allows to modify its own page tables, then you would not have any protection anymore because as a user application, I could point to anywhere in the physical memory space, including another processes space. In fact, I could just grant myself all the physical memory in the system, right? And shutting out any other application. So because of these reasons, the page table resides in the OS, right? It always resides in the OS and um, the data structure itself is completely protected. So where is the page table itself stored? It's stored in a page that is mapped only into the OS. Okay, so the space required to, uh, let's now take a look at how much space you need. So now we're gonna get into the data structure aspects of the page table, look at what the specific aspects uh, that a page table brings um, to the table that are interesting, right? So if you look at the space required for the NATO space, the space requirement is large, right? So you have, so let's take a 32-bit address space. So you have two to the 32 total number of addresses vended out in four kilobyte chunks, which means you have two to the 20 page table entries per process, right? So this is a huge number. So think about this. So if you have four gigabyte space and you have 220 page table entries, the total page table size is four megabytes. Remember that even if you have a page that's invalid, doesn't have a mapping, you still need to indicate that in some fashion, right? You still need to indicate with a zero or an X that this page does not exist. That still consumes space, right? And then there's all this protection, all of that, whether it's in disk or not. And so each page table entry, which is four bytes, you know, best case, then total bytes is four megabytes. And now let's say that this may not seem a lot, like a lot, but let's say since each process needs its own page table, right? You cannot have um, processes sharing page tables because that'll be a violation of protection. And so each process needs its own page table. And that's where things start to get complicated now because suppose you have 50 processes running on the system, which is a very reasonable assumption. If you top your Linux system, you'll see there's at least 50 including the system processes themselves. Then essentially I'm saying you need 200 megabytes of memory just for page tables. Now let's say you had 500 processes, you need two gigs, right? And so 
Now you can think of it as, and this is just 32-bit address space, so which means you can have a total physical memory size of 4 gigabytes. And you're saying if you have 4 gigabytes and you have 500 processes in your system, uh, the processes themselves don't use much, but it, their page tables are going to each use 4 megabytes. There are a lot of different programs that don't need 4 megabytes, right? You have lots of small scripts that are running there that can run in kilobyte space, right? And now you're saying each of those needs four, ki four megs of memory, right? And this is the problem of scale. Each process needs four megs. If you have a lot of processes, you start running into trouble. All right. So, first of all, the page tables are large enough that you can't keep it in the cache, right? A single process page table is already pretty large. 4 megs, you've just now clobbered all your L1 and L2 caches in your, in your multi-core system, right? So the idea would be to keep it in main memory. And so one of the first things you got to think about is if you keep it in main memory is how do you store it? And, you know, if it's 4 megabytes, do I want all of it in main memory or can some of it reside in disks, right? And what do you keep on the CPU itself? So we look at the data structure in general, but first thing you do is you need to point it to the table. And if it's a table, you need to reference it in some way, right? So you keep the physical address of the page table itself in a base register. So you keep the address of the page table itself in a base register with your CPU. And so you want to achieve one access to retrieve the physical page address, uh, second memory access to actually retrieve the data word. And this doubles the number of memory references, right? So you need translation for every access, all right? So you take every access, you use your page table base register, go look up the table, which is in physical memory. And so you have one access for the page table entry and one access for the data word itself. And so every now you've just converted every memory access into two accesses. This is obviously a dumb idea, right? It's not going to work because it's going to be very expensive in terms of, it's going to be essentially, it's going to sap out the performance of your system. So what you do is you use this thing called a translation leukocyte buffer to cache the page table entries. So we'll look at that in a little later, but essentially this thing called a translation leukocyte buffer acts as a cache for your page table entries, and it's in hardware, okay? It's a dedicated cache for just caching page table entries. So what if the page table doesn't fit in memory, right? So then you have multiple levels of page tables, and this is the dominant organization. Um, and x86 uses a combination of segmentation and paging, really, uh, underneath. Um, segmentation is used in a, in a very simple sense. It's, 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 uh, it's just for legacy purposes. So what happens with your page tables in physical memory is, okay, so you could have the following where you have multiple levels of page tables, where you, first of all, your virtual address gets translated, and then you have page tables themselves mapping. It looks at the entry and it maps it here, and that's where this one goes. Right. And similarly for the page table, the virtual address of process two, where it first refers to page table, and then it goes to where the actual application sites, applications memory. All right, so when you combine uh, segmentation and paging, which is what x86 does, um, essentially it's a multiple level of translation. So first thing you do is you have a segment, which is mapped, um, so what you do is you have this, your address is really split into three parts. So this is all the standard paging part. And then you also have another number that's prefixed, which is known as your segment, right? So a virtual address is really this segment part, which is your base, and then this page part, which is your virtual page number plus your offset, which essentially acts as your limit or bounce check. And then you realistically just translate. Uh, so this one provides a level of protection and then your pages have read write permissions. They don't really do bounce check, uh, which are further translated into physical addresses of the same size. Right. So this this part is all this part is all paging. 
this part with the bound check is all segmentation, right? And so you have a couple of uh, different schemes. A reason you do this is so that you can extend your virtual address space um, without having to actually change the program. So if you want your program to use more memory, then you want to do that without uh, changing the virtual address space. So and the next question is, what about a tree of tables? Right? And if you had the lowest level of the page table, memory is still allocated with the bitmap, and the higher levels are often segmented. And you could have any number of like, levels. Right? All right, so now what we're going to do is look at the different data structures in uh, organizations for page tables. Uh, and we'll look at that in the next segment.